So, a um, couple of words about myself. Um, uh, I used to be an engineer, uh, this is my first day at work. I work for different outsource companies and work with clients such as ABS UK, UBS Investment Bank. Then uh, I joined the agile consulting company, coaching company called Scrum Track in Russia, and I was doing the engineering coaching. And when you do this, when you teach other people how to do things right, uh, then at some point they'll start asking you, especially engineers, if you teach everyone else how to do things right, why you don't do something by yourself? And that gave me some ideas, maybe I should join a startup or start a startup. And eventually I joined one, uh, which is called Sandbird, and it was 2013. Uh, lots of things happened since then. I moved from Moscow to New York City, um, hired lots of great people in our team. And, uh, and at some point, uh, as you see, we run a subway company, one of our uh, advertising subway. Uh, a couple of words about the company itself. So what is Sunbird? Uh, our customers call us Netflix for perfume because the way how it works, we ship you perfume or other beauty product of your choice to you every month. We started this in 2013, and right now we have more than 30, more than 300,000 subscribers. Overall, we have 140 employees in the company. Most of them are remote. Uh, out, out of the 140, 37 are engineers. Uh, who else is remote? Uh, customer support, digital marketing, uh, and a couple of other folks work remotely. And we also have our great fulfillment center in New Jersey. So we kind of, uh, we can consider them also uh, remote workers at some point. Um, so what, uh, what is our, uh, at this point we have uh, about five, six different countries. We work in different time zones. Uh, it's actually not, you can see it here, uh, but we also have a couple of people in Bali. And uh, yeah, that's that's what I see happening. Once people join the remote company, they start to travel a lot and the location always changed. And one important thing that I focus more and more recent years is the culture. It's the culture of the company, the culture of our teams. Uh, and that's what I wanna to talk today. So, First, we need to focus uh, what is culture. We need to answer this question, what is culture? And if you we'll go to Wikipedia, uh, we will see some genetic typical Wikipedia answers. So that, that culture is an umbrella term which en encompasses yada yada. Andre, I'm sorry, and, I'm, I'm uh, sorry to interrupt you, mm -hmm. but um, your connection is somehow somewhat unstable. So mm -hmm. some parts of your speech are like not understandable. <laughs> Can you repeat uh, from this slide? Or check sure. your connection, please. Unfortunately, it might be some issues with the internet we have been having for the last couple of weeks. So I might go slower and uh, yeah, if something yeah. pops up, just ping me, ping me in chat. So yes, um, if you want to answer the question, what culture is, we can start with Wikipedia as a lot of people do nowadays, but it gives you a very generic term that doesn't help you much in building a company. So over time, I heard different answers to what culture is. And my favorite one is this one, that culture it's something that worked and your policy fails. And it's kind of true. You can come up with the best best practices ever. Um, and that's what I do as a CTO. I really care about our engineering practices. I want to make sure that we create best product. And in order to do this, we need best practices, but we can't describe everything. And honestly, you shouldn't describe everything because you will become very bureaucratic company uh, otherwise. So you need to create something that glues everyone together, that exists something like air, uh, something that nobody sees, but it helps you to live, helps you to, to survive. And um, when I want to talk about what is culture, what consists of and so on and so forth, I wanna start with a very 
simple exercise that you might play at your workplace. It's called spaghetti challenge. Um, so how does it work? Uh, all you need is one meter of uh, string, sticky tape, and one marshmallow. And the goal is to build the highest possible tower in 10 minutes. And the spaghetti challenge runs uh, across the globe and many different people participate in it. Lawyers, architects, engineers, um, everyone, including kids. And what's interesting about it, that kids usually wins. They don't have experience, they don't have to, they don't know who is higher in hierarchy, who is lower, uh, how to listen, how to do many stuff that we as adults do, but they have something more important that allows them to achieve the better result. And um, I really recommend you to go through this link and listen to this talk uh, presented on TED. Um, so guys who, who came up with spaghetti challenge, they did a search and they were really curious about the results, why kids are better in the challenge than adults. And then they described there are certain things that help them to be a better group, to more efficient group. And over time, their research evolved and it evolved into understanding what is culture, what makes certain group more effective. And um, they come up with a thought that there are three pillars of successful culture. The first one is the feel of belonging. Second one is ability to be vulnerable and be safe at the same time. And the third one is the purpose. People should feel the purpose. And I want to focus on each of these pillars uh, one by one. So let's start with belonging, what it is. Um, belonging is an ability to feel that you're part of something big, part of group, something important, and you feel like it's there. And it's hard to practice it when you're remote, especially when you're remote. Even in, uh, in companies, uh, in, even with groups that sit together, sometimes you might feel that you are not a part of this group. So being remote makes it much, much more difficult. So there are certain things that can help you to establish this connection between people to create this feel of belonging. And the first one and the most important one is to have the contact. That's why having video calls is so much better than uh, chatting to each other through chat or especially sending emails. Uh, because you see people, you see their emotions, you see their eyes, and you start feeling different. What we also find very important for us as a company is to do offsite meetups. Uh, when we gather together several times a year in different locations, and initially we thought that it would be a good idea to do some kind of hackathon to uh, execute certain projects to do something. But we very fast find out that the most important thing that you can do during these meetups is to let people talk to each other, is to let people understand who they're talking to, is to understand who, are, who is this person who I usually see as an avatar. And that really helps. And yes, avatars are important. On uh, one hand, you can pick kittens, uh, dogs, maybe Baby Yoda, but when you see your avatar, you always start thinking, hey, I'm gonna address this person right now. And that might change the, your tone, the way uh, you're going to talk to this person, and your selection of words. The next thing that I find really helpful is an ability to talk uh, to anyone in the company, uh, ignoring ranks, ignoring, ignoring departments, because uh, if you are business, if you want to be a successful business, if you want to be a successful company, you shouldn't differentiate people. Hey, this is marketing department. This is finance department. This is operations and so on and so forth. You should bring people together because at the end of the day, you're trying to solve the same problem. You're trying to make your fulfillment path faster. And that's what we do. That's why, why our engineers on a daily basis talk to people who work in the facility. They know how to feel something is broken. They'll help them to be better in their job. That's why our data engineering team work very close with finance and know, oh, right now they know a lot about revenue reports, uh, tax system in the United States and so on and so forth. Um, and you, in this moment, you feel that you're not just do the code or not just 
create some reports, you feel that you are building the business and that, that unites people. Um, what else you should do? You should always encourage people to ask questions. Of questions. Um, some sample things, some managers think that if no one asking any question, it means that everyone understood. But it also could mean that people just either don't care or they're afraid to ask questions because they're afraid to be uh, looking silly and so on and so forth. So if people ask questions, it means they, they care about what you do, they care about the uh, common goal and they really want to do their best. Um, speaking of managers, um, one important quality that I'm trying to achieve in the past years and I've learned how to do it right is the ability to listen, uh, to do to be a better listener, not just and not just listen to words, but listen, but I want to understand what people are trying to say. And unfortunately, when we have conversation through chat or through video, you lose this uh, sense of body language, you lose this emotion. That's why no become more and more important because at some point, uh, and I guess everyone here kind of know it. When you see certain text from the person you're familiar with, you can already feel this person angry, is the person relaxed, is everything fine, is this person happy, is it a joke or not, and so on and so forth. So learn to listen and learn to understand the emotions and learn to understand the meaning of the words, the real meaning of the words. Also, what helps a lot, and I understand you already covered it in the previous talk, is this uh, water cooler talks and ability to uh, have this fun conversation, human conversation, and as I read it in um, one of the best ma engineering manager book by Camille Fournier, she said that you have to have this PG-rated chats. People should be able to express their emotion about what they feel about politics, about current situation, about some movies. Uh, they should be able to each other and so on and so forth. So you need something where people can talk about something besides of work. Because yes, we spend most of our life as adults in the work, but it doesn't mean that that's the only part of our life. So encourage, encourage this conversation, make, make sure that people feel comfortable about it. And uh, the last part here is care about say thank you. Uh, because uh, we always forget about these small things because um, it requires us to do additional typing. It requires us to think about else. Hey, we're finishing this meeting, and I need to say thank you to this person because um, what many people feel when they do phone calls or video meetings and so forth, uh, at some point they can't wait. Then they can't wait till the meet, till the call is finished, and they can go eat. They can uh, play with the children. They can go get some coffee and tea, and they miss this last part of good finish of the good finisher of the meeting of the meeting and don't forget to say thank you this is this is really helpful and there is a quote that i want to highlight here um for those who for those of you who are not familiar uh, greg popovich is the coach of uh, basketball team san antonio sports uh and it's a great team uh they had very dramatic finals in uh nba and he is one of the most famous coach uh, in the United States for his unique style of coaching people, of taking care about his team. And um, at some point, these guys, they lost in the final and they were devastated. And he did his best in order to cheer them up and uh, make sure that next year they will win. And he said to the whole coaching team, the only thing that you, you should do right now, hug them and hold them. Uh, because that's what that's uh, what to create this feeling of being part of a family. When you when you don't talk, when you just hug a person, and that's enough. And if you you if you do this, you create this feeling of belonging to family, not just being an individual contributor. So from belonging, let's move to uh, vulnerability and safety. So what is actually vulnerability and safety and what it is important um, and why I'm talking about this today and why I wanna uh, do some accent uh, on it. Um, when I just became a manager, uh, it was, I believe after two years at startup, my initial uh, thoughts was I should always be right. As a manager, as a CTO, as a co-founder, 
I should always be right. And um, mostly because I want, I want people to see in me a leader, a manager, someone who is great. But I, what I found out over the uh, over past years, um, I had much bigger team when I had uh, more managers working with me, was people don't care that much if you're always right. What they care about is that you like them, that you make mistakes, that you admit mistakes. And it is hard. It is hard to admit mistakes when you're a manager. Um, but you, you need to do this because every manager build a culture by example. So you cannot create, um, you cannot create a culture, you cannot create a company when people want to test something, when people want to risk something, if you by yourself don't become vulnerable. Uh, and that's how I think I can help with this. So first one is you should over communicate expectations. You should over communicate uh, what you are doing, you should communicate what and and I use books for this. And when they just started these weekly calls, it was mostly, hey, let's go to the Jira board, see what's happening right now, and so on and so forth. Now, weekly calls for me is an opportunity to show the whole team what's going with the company, uh, what's going in different teams, what's going on with myself, why I'm, what I'm doing here, how is my work is relevant? What did I learn last week? What did, went wrong? And what I learned from that and how it can help them. Uh, and as I said, you should be ready to be vulnerable yourself. Uh, and in my case, uh, as an engineer, I was just started a startup. I didn't, learn, didn't know many things. How to do architecture right, what kind of frameworks to use, and so on and so forth. And over time, we collected a big, uh, big legacy, big technical debt, mostly because of my code. And I think that's good that I don't code anymore, uh, much better code base. But anyway, um, team, my engineers right now see that, hey, this is wrong, this is wrong, and like, why did he pick this stupid technology? And uh, Yes, I can become uh, silly in this in this case and say, hey, that was the best option. I think this is still best uh, framework in the world. But I, I want to be honest with themselves, with myself, say, hey, guys, we had a situation where we needed to act fast and I picked something that worked at this moment. Yes, it was not the right solution long, long term, uh, but now I have you and you have more experience. You know how to do things right. Now we can make, make these things right. And um, when you do this, you, you set an example that people also ready to find solutions that work right now, and they know if something goes wrong, it won't be a situation of blame. The other situation of doing the retrospective, doing uh, some reflect happened, and how to be better in the future. Um, and also speaking, uh, speaking of being, being a CTO, um, I find it really great to speak about group calls when we want to make some decision. For example, uh, one of the decisions that we are working on right now is our technical roadmap for this year. And yes, obviously I have uh, lots of ideas of what I want to see in our product, what I want to see in our technology stack. But the truth is, I don't use this technology on a daily basis. There are other people who use them today. There are other people who we will use the process uh, that they should come up. It's not I should dictate them. Hey guys, this is the process you should use because I like them. So instead of setting uh, a list of tasks that they should do, ask, hey guys, what do you want to see? And I let them talk and, and only in then say, hey guys, this is something else that you should consider because I think it might be helpful for us as a company. And it completely changed the way how you plan things, how you do the communications. And what I like a lot is to just disappear from time to time, and vacations helps a lot in this part. And a um, couple of months ago, I heard the joke um, that some company decided to uh, reduce the number of managers they have. So they sent all the managers to remote island and said, hey guys, you should continue to do your day-to-day -day job. Like, no, uh, no, they said, hey guys, you'll be on this island for months, 
uh, then you'll come back and we'll see uh, who, what happened with your teams. So one month passed and uh, there are teams who started to perform worse. Uh, there are teams who become better without a manager and there are teams changed. So my, and the second were fired because definitely the team performance was highly dependent on their presence. And after after I heard this joke, I learned that actually that is one of the practice in Japanese companies when they take all their management, maybe not all the management, but majority of their management, send them to a sea cruise and they see what's going on with the teams, what's going on with the company. And this is how they evaluate is the manager doing the right job or not. And honestly, my job here as a CTO, as a co-founder, is to make sure that company can exist without myself. So the company has a long life and it's great to disappear. Yes, first you uh, check your Slack, your email like crazy, make sure that you're not losing the, uh, the touches with your company, with your process, with your teams, but that's fine. Uh, only doing this, you can learn what you're doing right now. Wrong. And there is another couple of quotes from one of my favorite books called Creativity Inc. And Creativity Inc. is a book about Pixar and the way how they come up with their amazing cartoons, amazing movies uh, that are the same. And one of the most important part of this process is the brain trust. And brain trust is the process where on a regular basis, the director of the movie present the current plot, the current ideas, the current sketches of, of the movie to everyone in the company who won't participate. And the most important part of this presentation for this director is to gather the feedback. Don't be offensive about it. Listen to what people are trying to say to him or to her and adjust the movie. And sometimes they do three, four uh, different brain trusts uh, before, they, before they come up with the idea that reminds uh, some this course part of the movie. And they go through a couple of examples. Uh, the, obviously, their famous movie, The Toy Story, the first first chapter, uh, their, like, their original, uh, original characters were completely different from, from what we saw in the end. Or another great example is the uh, cartoon called Up. And if you read the original plot of this cartoon, it's very, very different story. And um, this is how they describe this brain trust. Uh, they say that you should turn pain into progress. Uh, you should be wrong as fast as you can. Um, you should be very rapid learning. And yes, this is painful. Uh, it takes time to be able to collect this feedback, to process the feedback, not to be offensive because only the feedback that we're getting is not about you. It's not about your it's about the job you do, how you can do your job better. So be honorable. And the last part, purpose. And purpose is something that we hear a lot, especially if you read an amazing book by Daniel Kahneman called Go, uh, called Drive. What motivate? What really motivates us? A purpose is one of the important thing uh, to be motivated. And uh, yeah, what is purpose here? And uh, as um, Denise described in his announcement of my talk that somehow I was able to attract uh, lots of engineers into the startup that sells perfume that sounds as far as possible from technology. Um, the, I think the main reason why I was able to do this is I was always inspired the whole idea of selling perfumes online through recommendations, through making them available. And that was always my goal um, as a, as a co-founder of the startup. And I was always selling this idea to everyone who I was interviewing. And now we have a very diverse team in terms of functions and we do a lot of interesting things here from the website perspective, from uh, operational perspective, from infrastructure perspective, from uh, algorithm and the science perspective and so on and so forth. So I can talk about it the whole day. Um, but it still remains important to keep in mind the purpose of what we are doing here, why we are here. And to do this, you should be always transparent about your goals and why it matters. And one thing that I 
it's just started to do recently. I think I started it what, just last year around September. It's a very basic function that every manager should do is the one on one, one on one meeting. Uh, and the way we, how we do it, we use Zoom. We have uh, bi weekly meetings with everyone who is to me. And how do you feel? We just have a call and I listen to, uh, to my team members. And I make careful notes about what, what we talked about. What are the action items for myself? What are the action items for uh, the person who, who I'm talking to, who I'm actually listening to? And we, we do this, we started this uh, notes in addition in Google Docs. Now I switch into a Notion and I have to say Notion is a great tool. It's a great, great uh, knowledge based, great, great interaction tool for your team. And uh, yeah, one, the, mo the main goal for me during this one-on-one -on -one is to make sure that people understand what's going on, is to understand why our company is doing certain things, why I am doing certain things, uh, and to answer all the possible questions. So unfortunately, many people turn one-on-one -on -one in some status report meetings or in, in some other type of manager meetings. No, these things are listening and make sure that you and you know uh, that you know like you don't forget about these meetings. Like you have calendar, you have Zoom, you have your notes, um, and you have very productive conversation. Also, you should be transparent about, about the priorities and not just hey guys, this is the thing number one, this is the thing number two, this is number three, but you should ex explain why you are doing things in certain order and remember from vulnerability. Over communicate, over communicate always, always, always about, hey guys, these are our goals for this week. This is why it is important for our business. And the last one is measure what matters. Uh, because in modern startup world, it's, uh, with, with its speed, it's really easy to forget what's important. It's really forget what's the goal, what we're trying to achieve, what's important for us. And what we find very helpful is to have one that how we're doing as a company. And everyone company uses it no matter where they're allocated, no matter what their function, they always know, hey, as a company, we are going towards our goal and we're doing fine. Or we're doing something wrong, we don't we are not achieving our results, we're not achieving goals, and they're able to raise their hand and say, Hey guys, something's wrong, let's communicate about it. And the final quote that I want to present here is very unexpected. Uh, uh, there is a great book uh, from that describes how U.S. Navy SEALs work as a team, how they achieve these fantastic results, and it's all about the mission. Uh, it's all about how they committed to this mission, how they understood this mission, and their ability to know what where they want to be as a as a successful team before the operation and after the operation. And I really recommend to read this big to read to read uh, this. Look, no matter how strange it might be for a company. And I guess um, the final point is you can build culture alone because culture is something that is around everyone in your company, everyone in your team. And you should ask their help to build this culture. And you should always forget about yourself and you should think about what's next, what makes us happy, what makes us productive, effective, and how make sure that every time we are opening our laptop, because we're not going to work in the office anymore, we're just opening our laptop and we are here, how make sure that every time you open your laptop, we are not afraid of incoming notification from Slack, we, are, we can't wait to see our coworkers. So on this, I hope a positive note, I wanna finish my presentation and say thank you. Thank you, Andre. Dennis, you muted. Yeah, I know. Thank you very much <laughs> for coming. Yeah, I'm usual. I forgot that button. Okay, Ksenia, do we have questions to Andre? Yes, we have one very interesting question uh, about how can you, if you can hack them and hold them remotely so how can you compensate for that i think that was uh, that was uh, when you were talking about the teammates so how can you uh, substitute the like real hugging <laughs> remotely? Oh, you substitute hugging? oh actually i have a couple of examples uh my 
it's not exactly hacking, but for example, unfortunately last year, two examples. Uh, unfortunately last year we did the company restructure and we had to let some people go. And it was a very emotional moment for our company. It was a very sad, sad moment for, for, for us as a company. And uh, we did say goodbye to each other. And after the, after the thing happened, uh, people just have a small conversations and they cheered for people who are leaving and had an evening full of discussion about what they did together. They, they drink together through, through Zoom. And another example is the recent New Year. So we have a tradition that before the end of the year, we have a, a common, uh, we have a group call with the engineering team when I say thank you to them, when I quickly go through what happened through the year and we just toast to each other and we drink whatever so, something someone is drinking. So this year it happened again. And after we finished the official part, team just stayed together. It was midnight for, for some of them. For some of them, it was around like 6 a.m. Uh, because we have a person in Hong Kong. But people were just staying, they were hanging around, they were drinking, they were just uh, saying jokes, uh, telling different stories and so on. Of yes, it's not a physical hug, but it's something that makes it warm and you feel it's warm. So have more of these moments when you communicate um, this idea of work. For example, another example that uh, what we did, we, sometimes we play Quake 3 together. And it's another, another uh, ability to kind of hug each other.